So we're here at Deer Lake Truck and Tire. Again, dropped the trailer off to them for uh, Tuesday and we'll see if we can get that pump done. It's not, hopefully they don't mind it here over the weekend. Hey. Not, 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 not in tow today. No, no, going to, I had a pump stolen off my trailer for the ramp, so that's no good. Just left that in the corner, broke. Now I'm gonna go home for Thanksgiving, so. I don't want you to leave too. All right, do I get to go underneath? Yeah. Oh, it's the first time. Well, I didn't think I'd ever get underneath the main deck. It's like, we might do it this time. Not that I really want to be down there. Guys, as promised, I'm gonna do that Q&A video for you. Yeah, what a beautiful day. It's like, not too warm. It's like 15, 14, 15 degrees, which is perfect for me. I don't like heat. Oh man, just look at this, look at this. At that. Let's hop in the old power stroke and uh, answer some of those fine questions that you guys gave me. An update for you guys. Didn't get the pump. The CCV didn't come in that Friday, but we did get our to get our glass there. That was expensive. Down with it. Put the keys are in here. All right, let's go for a little drive there till uh, till we get some internet service to And we are here. It's a bit of a change of plans apparently. Um I think we're going on four wheeler now. While I'm out here, this is where I'll get started. Okay, I'm gonna answer the ones on Instagram first. Danger underscore industries, go follow that. Okay, first one I see here is, do you have a CDL? There's no way I'd still be in business after three years of hauling without one. I will say though, just keep this question interesting, is when I first started, I didn't. I didn't know anything about the industry. I didn't even know that was a thing for using a pickup truck and a trailer. But uh, yeah, I you know flew under the radar for a while and uh, yeah, I didn't have one go to the top here how did I get into the business and that's a lot of them and I'll be making a separate video to elaborate on this but it was pretty much I always enjoyed driving um, I got into the power stroke scene when my uncle let me drive his and I just I just love the, the the trucks and you know so after a while you know I said you know I like driving I recently had heard of the hotshot trucking thing it seemed like something that I would like to get into right and uh, and that's, that's really what did it. I just went, made a business plan, a year later got a trailer, and I got into it. And so far, I don't think I regret anything. I'm gonna butcher your name, I am sorry. Elalistair? 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 You wanna do this in Australia. Are there any companies out there that do this sort of stuff? In Australia, I have no idea. Absolutely no clue. But, I mean, I'm a firm believer that if you want to do something, you can do it. There's always a will. Uh, no. Where there's a will, there's a way. No pickup trucks are really expensive down there. Like, for something that'd be 70,000 in Canada, you'd be looking at 110 in Australia or more. It messes with the profitability. You upgrade your truck to a 2020 uh, Ford F350. I won't be getting another F350. This is going to be my last F350. Um, I'm, it's going to be 450 and up. Having those commercial tires, um, of course, uh, you can go heavier and heavier with your weights on the trucks, but I mean, I don't have much trouble keeping legal in this one. And when I'm not legal, I'm way not legal. Like it's not like a question of pounds, it's thousands of pounds. But I'm definitely gonna be getting a 450 because I want bigger brakes. These brakes on this here, they suck. You going downhill, it doesn't slow down very much before the brakes start fading. The turning radius on this sucks. F450 has a wider axle. And yeah, just those commercial tires, they last longer. Um, it just makes more sense when you're driving commercially. So we're here bottoming out on every rock that's like, even rocks you can't see because there's plow mounts. As you guys know, I wouldn't care, but this isn't my four-wheeler, so. It was day two, pretty much just enjoying Thanksgiving weekends. Back into it. So I got all the questions here saved on my phone. 
So how did you afford the truck to start your business? Uh, a lot of people ask this question. Obviously, it's financed. When I was young, I worked fishing, offloading, whatever little tiny job I could get my hands on, whether it paid 13 bucks an hour or 20 bucks an hour, I did whatever I could. And uh, as soon as I turned 18, which is the legal age of adulthood here in Canada, um, I got my first credit card. So pretty much you wanna make as much money as you can, save as much money as you can. When you're starting a business, you need capital and a good credit rating. So that's what I did. I just worked my butt off and saved whatever I could. Uh, you know, you can get jobs anywhere from Tim Hortons to, uh, you know, road work if you want to do a couple little courses. There's a lot of uh, good paying jobs you can get with a course that lasts, you know, three or four a week, two weeks, and that'll open up a lot of possibilities. I got uh, an opportunity to work with uh, the big uh, Muskrat Falls project here in Labrador. Uh, that's where most of the money came from. Of course, I started off small and then from there I worked my way up. Another thing is financing. I was young, so obviously you're gonna have to line up a co-signer or something if you don't have a huge credit history. Just make sure you get that credit card as soon as you can. Keep the balance paid every month. Don't miss any payments, that's the big thing. This is a big one. How did you become aware of the industry? How did you to enter a competition in the industry? Different, oh, okay, one at a time. Uh, how did I became, become aware? Um, I think it was on Facebook. I was in this Power Strokes group and I just saw some people doing it. Piqued my interest. What inspired you to enter it? Um, just my love for driving, the love for these trucks. I was really comfortable with these things, these, the Power Strokes. And I feel like just Power Strokes in general, I had a lot of knowledge, I had some skill with them. Like a lot of people say, if you have a skill, you should try and make money with it. Is the market big enough for me to expand? Yes, it is. Competition in the industry, there, there, there is some, but it's you gotta separate yourself from the competition by offering, it's always customer service. That's always what, what really comes up uh, when people talk about it. And I have already become an employer, technically, and, or I guess, yeah, I have. With time, as I see fit, as I become more comfortable with the industry, I will be expanding. Why don't you take better care of your truck? I don't think we've ever seen it washed or at least the interior cleaned out. You haven't watched all of my videos. The trucks uh, do get washed. The thing is, they're work trucks. If you take, you know, I like to take about a few hours every week to just go through it, make sure it's toddy. And uh, big thing is I like the inside to be organized. You know, I want, like receipts have to be in one place. Documents have to be in another place. Customers keys have to be taken care of. I like to keep the dash wash like cleaned. It's, it's a big thing. Um, big thing is right now in the last few videos, the interior of the truck has been dirty because of the Alberta trip. Pretty much that just became such a fast paced trip that I was just, you know, turn and burn as quite quickly as I can. On my way back from Alberta, I didn't take a single hotel. I was just on the road trying to cover as much distance as possible. Um, for the outside, just the gravel roads. You know, when you're putting a lot of kilometers on a truck, it gets dirty. So I could clean it, drive two hours, and it'll be dirty again. So that's the reason I don't put a huge emphasis on keeping the truck clean. Um, I like to keep it presentable, but sometimes it's not even an option. I'm gonna look into getting a, like an F11 top coat or some ceramic coating. I should be able to just buy a few pressure washers, put them all over the place, and every now and then give her a good spray down. For me, it takes about two or three hours to clean one of these trucks on the outside, just get it looking okay. I mean, it's pretty much futile. Problems you've had with the 6.7? No, I am not answering that question. Too much of a question. Um, my F250. I had a sensor go. Uh, this one here that you guys are sitting on, whew, uh, a lot of stuff. Pretty much everything plastic. Uh, fuel line bust, alternator go, uh, wire chafing, uh, battery caught fire. I've had the CCV go. Wheel well liners, they self-destructed. Eight holes in them before I even got off the pavement. Roof stick, I had a few problems. Some big, some small. Okay, uh, why not try a Ram truck? What do you like about Fords? Um, this is gonna answer a few questions. Um, I am not, I'm not brand loyal. I'm gonna say that now. Um, I'm not loyal to the brands, but I do have stuff I like about some, stuff I don't like about some. The Rams for a long time to me just looked like toys. Uh, they, they looked mean and stuff, but they looked like toys. They weren't built very well. They made sounds, they rattled. You hear a lot about wiring issues, electrical issues, which there is nothing I hate more than electrical issues. Of course, then the transmissions. Everyone that I know that had Dodges or still has them, 
um, they either still hate the brand or their truck has had some problems. Um, up here in Labrador, I guess our roads are shit and the gravel road is even shittier. Uh, it's just that the trucks tear themselves apart and I've had a lot of people tell me not to buy the Ram. GMC, when I first, when I didn't know any better, when I didn't know how the axle weights work and GVWR, like I didn't know black and white, it was kind of gray for me. Their rating was 23,500, which just wasn't enough. I wasn't comfortable with that. I don't like how they don't have a solid axle. Having that solid axle is a lot more robust. This truck here, and Rams also, they've had, they have trouble with that. The front ends, they take a lot of abuse on these roads. Um, this one here, this, one, this one's up there in kilometers. 140, 150,000 kilometers. And the front end's still perfect. Same thing with my F-250, 170,000 kilometers. Front end's still perfect. No maintenance needs to be done. I had it checked. Just incredibly tough trucks. I like the way they look. At several trucks, I would definitely be getting, you know, a Ram and a GMC. But if I have, you know, this is my one dually. I only have this dually right now, my F-250 for lighter work. But I need a dually, and I need that dually to perform 100% whenever I need it to. This truck is always up for that. Um, really trust it. Tell us all your, of your vehicles and toys from the very first one. Okay, shit. Um, I had a sea once upon a time. That was interesting. Turns out it was a piece of shit. Uh, my first truck was actually the F-250. Uh, I've had this F-350 here, obviously. Four-wheeler. My father bought that in 2012, I think. I'm the only one that really uses it. I got a... Uh, Speed limit's 50 here. I got a 2018 Freeride 154, that's fun. I got a Scandic, which isn't really a toy, it's for hauling wood. In 2000, yeah, 2000, what is it, 10? 2010 Scandic, super wide track, love that thing. Renegade 800, 2009, I still need to do the motor in it. That's it. Is your truck a 6.7? Yes, both of them. Any plans in the future to ever get a semi? If so, which brand, model, which, ah, yeah. When the next step is evident and that's it, like there's only one way to go up and that's get a semi, then I will probably be looking at the Freightliners. They seem to be pretty good. Freightliner with, Freightliner with a Cummins. Um, definitely gonna be a bigger, powerful truck. I like the Peterbilts, but I think they're more for show. They're, I'm sure they're good trucks. Like I said, just get a Freightliner. They seem pretty good. All right, it was getting a little cold. I'm gonna hop in the old power stroke here and uh, and read off some more questions. For anyone wondering, camera's set up. This phone is gonna be put in a phone holder slash wireless charger. Would you own a Dodge if not, why? The only reason I wouldn't is they seem to be pieces of shit. Okay, if you had to get rid of the dually, which truck would you replace it with? Um, if we were to buy two or three trucks, uh, once again, I don't know if I would really want the Dodge. Um, I would really love a GMC. I love the way they look. I love the way they ride. You know, without that that uh, solid front axle, they are really nice trucks. I'd probably go for a GMC because that's just the one I want. Um, just freaking love those trucks. And contrary to popular opinion, I also love the new Chevys. That I'm sticking with Ford because even though this one has been a bit of a piece of shit, it has done very well considering what I put it through. I just know them inside out, really. Like everyone says they're hard to work on. If I had to change the turbo, I mean, I could do it. It would take an extra two or three hours, but I, I mean, I just get the wrenches out and start working at it. With a Dodge or something, with a GMC, I wouldn't even know what I'm looking at probably. So for that reason alone, I'd be sticking with Ford. Okay, how many months will it take you to edit this video? Uh, I'm sorry guys, I'm sorry, I'm a busy guy. Uh, do you have a rate sheet? Do you give quotes per job? Okay, really I just know the market. It's been hard because there's so many different routes and everything and each route has its own uh, challenges and reasons why it costs a lot of money. I just kind of have the prices in my head. I know what these things cost. Of course I try and stay around 270, 270 uh, kilometers uh, dollars per kilometer is the same as three dollars per mile in the US. So that's about I've been trying to stay around there or three dollars if I can get it Eventually, I guess I will get a rate sheet on the go so that I can have other people help quote and Employees will be able to quote as well roughly. Okay. This one's about shooting. Do I think of all those creative shots during or uh, pretty much I just I like to let's look around and uh, Just see what would tell the best story see what would because the big thing for B-roll, and that's what this is called, um, is to show something that helps 
tell the main story. So like, let's say I'm going from point A to point B, I'll throw in a time lapse, I'll throw in stuff like that. That's pretty much what it is, is I look around, if the, you know, sunset, I'm gonna film something with that to do with the sunset. Watching the gauge cluster do its things, you know, uh, pretty much showing you guys what the motor is doing. I like that. It helps, you know, tell the story. Sometimes I'll plan everything ahead of time, but usually, especially when I'm just running and gunning, doing a vlog, I'll, I'll just, yeah, think of it at the time. Like there, if I wasn't talking, I would have shot the Quebec flag. See Quebec back there. We'll shoot the ferry. Show you guys where I am, because even my viewers that don't live here know know what this ferry is, pretty much. Peanut butter, creamy, crunchy, or both. Um, because I posted these questions a while ago, um, I had a lot of time to think about this one. And last night I was going through, I said, you know what, like, peanut, crunchy peanut butter was fun, you know. It's fun to try once or twice, but uh, definitely creamy. You know, there's never a time when I want crunchy peanut butter. It's definitely, definitely creamy, because I find, like, especially if you're going to have some apple juice with it, or, um, you know, it's just, it's just a nice, easy-to-eat snack. It's just... I really, I really enjoy smooth peanut butter. And I'm not really a big peanut butter guy. I just really found this question intriguing. For some reason, it really got my mind going. And, and another thing, I don't really like the nuts. The nuts, you know, you, they crunch them up and they get in your gums and your teeth and everything. It's like almost like I gotta brush my teeth every time I eat like peanuts or smooth, smooth peanut butter. Sorry to sound so stupid. No, no stupid questions. Uh, what exactly is a hotshot trucker? Hot, you know what? I was in the industry for a year and didn't know what that meant. Let's go outside while we still have a tiny bit of light. Love this place. Usually we've got a nice sunset over here. You can see a bit of like red tones, but uh, not today. Okay, hopefully you don't fall down. Oh, I cannot afford a new camera right now. If I drop this camera, we're going back to filming on cell phones. So uh, yeah, about the peanut butter. Really, uh, actually, uh, well, a damn peanut butter question. I don't. What is a hot shot? Okay, so yeah, I was into this industry for a while. I didn't even know what a hot shot was. Hot shotting is when a load needs to be delivered ASAP. Uh, hang on, I'm gonna turn the truck off too. Friggin' DPF just stinks. Usually track trailers, they're booked for like two or three weeks because you need to be with a truck like that. You need to keep the money rolling in. These are called hot shot rigs. The truck and the trailer, because they cost a whole lot less to keep insured, they cost a whole lot less to keep sitting. You know, the payments are a lot lower. Registration year to year is a lot. So you can have two or three of these sitting and when a customer needs something right away, call them up and that gets, and it gets done right away. Dispatch a truck. These are a lot easier to keep in abundance, like a lot of them, the trailers, are, everything's just cheaper and more affordable. And hot shot loads, that's what they are. They're loads that need to be moved snappy snappy. I don't know why it's called a hot shot. I think that's the dumbest name, but can't change what's already done. Here's a fun fact. 90% of hot shots are actually just LTL heavy couriers. Like I have taken maybe three or four hot shot loads in the two and a half years I've been in business, two and a half, three years. I mean, it doesn't matter even if you're not doing you know, real hot shot work. Still call yourself a hot shot if that makes your goat float. Pretty much just LTL. And as long as it's making money and putting, you know, putting food on the plate, who really cares? Favorite non-American truck. So like, what is there? There's the Tundra, there's that Nissan. Non-American trucks. There's the Hino, of course, if you want to talk about commercial stuff, which is Toyota anyways. Volvo, I guess. I don't, I don't even know. Uh, I like them all equally. Once again, like I'm not a big with the favorite trucks. If I were to go buy one right now, if I had a ton of money, I'd just go buy the Tundra with the 1974 edition. I think that's what it is. That is a freaking gorgeous truck. Like, as I mentioned, I love the King Ranches. That's like even nicer than a King Ranch. So uh, would you ever consider getting a 450 or 550 and what are, now, I talked about this yesterday, but 450 yes, 550 no. Not going with any chassis cabs from any of the companies. They derate them. Uh, you don't get as much RPM, which is fine, I guess. Um, but the big thing is they use different turbos. I don't, I don't like that. They're not meant for pulling. They're meant for a lot of weight capacity and retarded drivers. I'd rather, you know, slack off the throttle, take it easy on the truck. Uh, what is my opinion on flatbeds? Also, uh, flatbeds, I always kind of wanted one, but I like how the truck, when I don't have the trailer on, that's another reason I like to use these trucks. It just doesn't look commercial. I can comfortably ride around in it. Uh, the flatbed, I find especially, you know, the way my trucks end up looking, it'll get sandblasted and rusty and I just, I just don't want it. I don't, if I'm going to use a pickup truck, 
I want it to stay a pickup truck. You know, I'm not trying to make it into anything else. Uh, why don't I have a transfer tank? I like the bed. Literally, it's the same answer. I just like having the bed, being able to put four-wheelers, skidoos in it. Sometimes I have to go drop the trailer and go a distance, like out of the way to get a snowmobile or a four-wheeler for someone. That way I'm able to put it in my truck. Instead of hauling the big heavy trailer with me, especially doing LTL, it makes doing little runs a lot easier. And the transfer tank just, I'd lose space. Why did you just go into the business for yourself instead of working in the industry? Um, pretty much, I just have a fuck it, let's do it attitude. Um, that's the way you gotta be. You go hesitating, you know, next thing you know, I'd work, you know, three or four years, met, meet the love of my life, be comfortable, settle down, get a good paycheck coming in. When you get comfortable, that is when you start making progress. And it's faster to learn the hard way and just, and really, like, it's not that complicated. I'm just an idiot. Whether I work for someone else or work for myself, I'd be making these mistakes. At least now I can just answer to myself and not have to tell someone else, right? Okay, I see a lot of people say you're reckless and dangerous when you do things loads like snowblower trucks. Do you think hauling such extreme loads with an F-350 is actually dangerous? Or do you feel you handled them responsibly and safely? Personally, I think you were fine. You're very good at strapping down loads from what I've seen, and you seem to know your limits. Thank you. That's the big thing. Um, you could haul whatever the hell you want. If this truck can move it and stop it reasonably, you could haul it. You know, you might have to go five kilometers an hour to do it safely, but you can do it. So the big thing is just always to take your time. That's why I went back and said to the customer, you know, I'm gonna have to charge you a lot more uh, because it's gonna take a bunch more of my time I'm gonna have to go really slow and it's gonna have extra wear and tear on the truck. A lot of people, this is what I don't show in the videos because no one really wants to see me just crawling across a road. But especially when we came to that big hill, you saw me put it in four low going down the hill. That's just, I probably didn't even have to, it was just a precaution. And I crawled down that hill going 10 kilometers an hour. Telling me I'm gonna kill someone is shit. So that's why I brush a lot of the silly comments off is because no one really knows what precautions I took. The big thing with the videos is no one really cares. You know, when I get tired, I'm the first one to say, screw this, I'm gonna get a nap. And I make sure my customers know that. I'm not putting my life or anyone's life or even a tire in jeopardy because it's not worth it. How far west do you go? I want to go to BC, but so far I've only been to like Calgary. I think that's the furthest west. Been to Fort Mac, pretty much stopped there. I've been to Banff, like just, you know, in the mountains pretty close to BC but uh, not with the trailer to and from the US um, once again the US I believe that the uh, DOT is a lot worse than the US so I'm gonna make sure that I know pretty much everything before I go messing around down there because that's a long ways from home something I've noticed is that the further you get from home the sooner things go terribly wrong and when they do the worse they are I'm all right in moose land drinking maple syrup for now how do you get a license to transport what you transport? Uh, you sign up for a course and that's it. For me, for my CDL, I challenged it. I just went and, uh, no studying, no nothing, just went and did the test and I passed it and I got my CDL. Biggest load you ever pulled, weight and size. Okay, weight, um, that truck, that second truck that I took, that was definitely the heaviest thing I've ever taken. Um, and size, uh, for size, definitely that truck. That's absolutely huge. Just weight and size, it was crazy. How many times have you been stopped to get your load checked? I'd say a dozen. You abuse the crap out of these Fords, it's not gonna take it as well as the Ram. Buy a Ram, you won't regret it. That's from Jeff Little. Jeff Little, I would like you to take your Ram and your trailer, take the loads that I take over the roads that I take them on, and then we'll have some real physical evidence. Um, all the 5500s and the commercial trucks that I see up here, they're falling apart. Um, the Rams, people are telling me not to buy them. The company drivers, even Ram people tell me not to buy a Ram. Up here, it's a different, it's a different game. Maybe they'll take it, maybe they won't. All the people telling me to buy Rams and stuff. I will one day, but for now, um, they're not, they're not lasting and that, that's fact. They're not lasting up here. What would I have to do to the to his F-250 to make it reliably tow 20,000 pounds? Um, really, it's an 06, so really just, as long as it's bulletproof, and yours is apparently, 530 horsepower, 970 foot. First thing, turn that the f down. Um, you don't need more than 300 horsepower. 400 if you really wanna go. 
um, to tow things, the less power, the better. That is how you're gonna get the most reliable uh, experience out of your truck. Have I considered about doing a meetup? Toronto, maybe. I love Toronto. Uh, shit. All right, we gotta get going. It's super dark now. Let's head in and uh, finish this off. Hey, would you consider doing a meetup along one of your routes? Toronto, maybe. I think I might need a bit more than 30,000 subscribers to do a meetup. Um, actually, here's what I'm gonna do in this video. Comment down below where you guys are from. Um, I would actually like to know where most of you guys are from. Um, I know most of you are in the US, but I mean, I have a passport. But we can make it happen. So, uh, how are they different in Canada than here in the US? I'm guessing about laws and trucking and stuff in general. Um, DOT, uh, I think they're a little bit worse. The, the enforcement, there's some big highway systems in, uh, in the US. Overall, I think it's pretty much the same. Our hours of service, uh, the, the rules when it comes to your logging of your hours, uh, it's, they're a bit better here in Canada. Good truck and trailer to start out with. I was looking forward to getting to this question. Um, it really depends on what you want to haul. You should have put that in your question. If you know what you're gonna haul, if you're doing strictly shot, hot shot, like oil field, just taking drill bits out, stuff like that, small parts here and there. If you're doing, if you're planning on sticking like to real hot shot, um, where you need to, you know, quick, efficient, and you need to get into tight spaces, a 30 foot gooseneck would be a good place to start. And uh, a dually, obviously. A lot of people are doing non-CDL stuff, uh, non-commercial driver's license, so I don't think that's a good way to go. I think if you're gonna get into the industry, do it right, get your commercial driver's license, and go from there. But uh, when it comes to truck and trailer, if you're doing that, if you plan on doing LTL, I always recommend getting the biggest trailer you can. So like for me, that'd be a 53 foot. Uh, you have to watch out in the US with the length laws. You're only allowed 65 feet. Um, but if you take the bed off your truck and register it as a tractor, maybe get a little step deck built for it, um, that's no problem. So I would recommend getting the biggest bed possible. My only setup would be a 4500 uh, or a 450 with a 53 foot gooseneck. Uh, big thing that I'm going to say are the tires. Try and stick with anything more than 10 ply. So 12 ply, 14 ply, I got 16 ply right now, I'm really enjoying those but uh, make sure you get those commercial tires. Delete and tune the dually. This is every video, every video this question comes up and I wish it wouldn't. Reason number one that I won't do it, I have my F250, which is already deleted. Um, it's, that's my fun truck, you know, I don't need it to look or sound professional. Um, it can be, you know, a big dirty diesel all day. The dually is my professional rig. I like being able to, I like being able to go into small communities and suburbs without worrying about uh, making too much noise. Of course, you can put a muffler on it, but then at, at that point, what's the, what's the point? I'm spending two grand plus uh, to accomplish not much. I mean, the system, the DPF system on that thing, it's working fine. It works great. I put DEF in it, that's a pain in the ass. But in the winter, you know, minus 40, minus 50, it doesn't use any because it's frozen all the time. Plus, they're really cracking down on it, so soon it's gonna be hard to get away with it. I went to Ontario with my F-250, got a bunch of tickets, and was told not to return with it. So my F-250 is banned from Ontario pretty much. How much time do I spend on the road annually? Too much, way too much. Um, I think I made it out to be like 70, 70 days or something. That's just by the kilometers. Um, really, when you get into this, you gotta be prepared to spend a lot of your time in that truck. Uh, kinda sucks, but uh, hey, it works. If it's for some people, you know, you'd be happy to spend, you know, two months on the road, go home for a week or two, maybe. But uh, it's not for me, so that's why I'm looking to hire people. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite a bit, and you need to be out there. I mean, if you're home and you're the only driver that drives your truck, uh, you got those payments. You know, your insurance, your notes, your, your, you know, your registrations and stuff. Um, everything except for maintenance is still there, right? And fuel. Hmm. Do, do dicks fly? Why? Well, David Moore, have you ever been on an airplane? The good one. What's your biggest fear pulling a load? Um, to be honest, my biggest fear while pulling a load is 
Okay, well, this job, it's a dangerous job. Being on the road, it's very dangerous. You're surrounded by 3,000 pound explosive missiles, you know, that can veer off course and hit you at any moment. I'm just waiting for someone to fall asleep at the wheel and, you know, just come have a head on. That's, that's what I'm afraid of. When you're pulling a trailer, you lose all of your maneuverability. You can't turn very fast, and if you do, you a huge risk of flipping over. I really do worry about uh, being hit, like a head-on. Like I don't, I don't care about getting T-boned or just a stupid little accident, as long as it's not by like a huge semi or something. But I could definitely see, you know, someone, something just happening, right? And uh, and you know that can just end everything just like that. Then you're done. And that's something I think about a lot. That's you never like pretty much. I never know if when I leave home if I'm gonna come back because so many people are using cell phones while driving. Uh, so many people are just completely obliter like oblivious to what they're doing behind the wheel. I see a lot of people falling asleep, and I see it all the time. One story that really sticks out in my mind is um, I'm sure a few of you have heard about it. It was there was these uh, this van of kids that were uh, saving up, you know, for this trip to Disney for like a year or two. And they, you know, they rented a van and everyone got in, like seven or eight school children and their teacher and someone else and a trucker, you know, he fell asleep or had a heart attack or, yeah, I think he had a heart attack. Went over the median, ran over the van and killed like most of them, killed four or five. And just like that, to no fault of their own, they're all gone now. I feel like that's heartbreaking and I hear of it all the time. It's just a matter of time pretty much. It's just a truck or car, you can stop really quick, you know, you can accelerate, you can turn, but you know, with one of these, if you turn, you can jackknife, you slam on the brakes, you can jackknife. When you try and accelerate, nothing happens. You know, if you try and avoid something on the road, like a moose, let's say, that's another big fear is hitting a moose. You know, if I hit a moose, it comes right in through the cab, all right, that's it. You know, if, if, if you try and avoid something on the road, you go off the road, if, you know, the ditch itself doesn't kill you, well, there's a good chance that that load back there will, right? If you're too, yeah, like something happening to the hitch, the system there, um, something coming off. I mean, I was talking to someone who, uh, I'm not sure if it happened to him or if he saw it happen, but uh, the fifth wheel wasn't attached properly, this is on a semi, fifth wheel wasn't locked in properly, and uh, trailer came off. Went and killed a family, like a family of six, just ended their life, lives right there, and that's, yeah, the road is a dangerous place. Really, like, you just think about the energy of these giant vehicles going around. I mean, think about it. 40,000 pounds, 48,000 pounds is what my max gross is. 48,000 pounds moving down the road at 100 kilometers an hour. Like, that's, yeah, it's enough energy to power a few houses for like a day. I mean, me as a driver, no one, no driver is perfect. Everyone can make mistakes and you're pretty much all the time when you're on that road, you're one mistake away from dying. Especially when it comes to falling asleep. And here's a message for everyone. If you drive and find yourself getting tired, um, it's not worth fighting it. You know, especially, it's so easy to just drift off, fall asleep, and then next thing you know, you don't wake up, right? You're, you're, you're dead. That's it, you're, you're done. So if you ever, if guys, if, if any one of you ever get tired, you know, just say, well, it's a good time for a nap. Who doesn't like a nap, right? And you know, if you're in a hurry to get somewhere, it's not worth it. It's never worth it. It's not gonna. Guys, well, geez, that was, that, that's it. There was a lot of questions there. Um, it was a blast going through them. It took like no time. Let me know if you want to do more of these. You guys had a safe and enjoyable Thanksgiving. Um, hope that you guys got home with your families. If you didn't, especially, you know, all those guys on the road out there. You know, I hope you made the best of it. If you were on the road, I hope you got good goddamn paychecks. Guys, for all the subscribers, like 30,500 now or something. Uh, it's awesome. Love seeing that go up. You guys have a good day.